Yeah, I think it was. It was, and we're seeing it again. I'm not sure we should be casting these kind of Lost Zone decks, Joe, <laughs> because they we're always prize too much to use a Raiding Greninja. That's for later. Now we are rolling, and Isaiah Bradner starting off there with a Buddy Buddy pop in, having a little bit of a look through the deck there, figuring out what's prize, going to get a couple of basic Pokemon. As my favorite card, the Monkey Dory, in the active position to start off this turn and is going to look through those prize cards. Even Gardevoir at this stage plays so many one-off copies of Pokemon and even lots of one-off supporter cards and items. So really important to keep track of a lot of these options here. Isaiah's a spec of choice is the unfair stamp. That's another big card we're going to have to follow throughout the game. When Isaiah can time this to make the most out of it could be the difference in this matchup. Yeah, traditionally, this is the one people are expecting coming in. We did see Henry Chow with yeah. Hyper Aroma. Very, we saw in the interview with Juan Joe, very bullish. This is the correct <laughs> A-spec in Gardevoir. No, no hedging there. As I might disagree. <laughs> I was going to say, a lot of the Gardevoir players here do seem to disagree a little bit. So, no Hyper Aroma here. We're rolling with the unfair stamp. Going to see if it makes a little bit of a difference. What I will say, Hyper Aroma has to be a turn one or two thing. Unfair Stamp stays relevant for the game a lot of the time. We've had two of the routes hit in the bench. What else can we get? Just a bunch of supporters. We're holding on to Earthen Vessel and Cresselia. Can we Vessel away? Well, we're going to get rid of the Cresselia. Sometimes this is a great offset for early pressure. Thanks to the tankiness of Cresselia, that base 120 hit points. But as I does know just how aggressive Andrews this can be. He knows that he can get to seven much more capably than normal lost zone engines of the previous format. So maybe the Cresselia just isn't fast enough in this situation and we need to sacrifice it for some energy cards instead here. Yeah, I don't mind that too much. Isaiah obviously far for far excuse me, very familiar yes. with this deck. Going to grab a couple of energy off the earth and vessel. The real priority here is setting up, getting rolling, getting a curlier out, drawing cards and getting a decent attacker out. I love the Cresselia being able to damage your own Pokemon with your Guard of Wari X and then move all that damage onto one of your opponent's Pokemon, even on the bench, taking out some of those low HP Pokemon in this Lost Zone build. But if your opponent is set up and firing off these giant attacks and you're taking out Comfey on the bench, sometimes you're just a turn or two too far behind. I think we don't have any other actions here apart from a possible attachment to Monkey Dory. I think we've got to pass things over beyond that. And then we go over to Andrew, and it's going to be all about trying to reach that early Mirage Gate. It would be a wondrous combination of cards required, but it is possible. And we've already mentioned the quad poker stop, the three lost vacuum. This gives Andrew so many more opportunities to reach an early seven card loss zone. So let's see how his hand is playing out. I don't think it's that good right now, Ross, but we do at least have Buddy Buddy Poffin for some Comfey, and we have a poker stop and a dream. Yeah, get the Comfey rolling, go from there. The route to seven, generally speaking, is three flowers led to a Comfey, use Chorus' experiment to get two, and then play your own stadium or item card, or tool card, use Lost Vacuum to get rid of that while also Lost Zoning another card from your hand as part of the payment. That gets you up to seven. Three from Comfey, two from Chorus' experiment, two from Lost Vacuum. That is how you get seven. And like you say, that's why we see the heavy Pokestop line, the full four copies, because that helps you to get through and grab both your Mirage Gate if you get to seven and your Lost Vacuum to help you get to Hedr seven. Hedrick has drawn into four of his energy and prized two of the water. He only has two Lightning Energy in his deck right now. That's so wild for an archetype that is looking to uh, take full advantage of those Mirage Gates. So an extra piece might be required here from Andrew which would be the Super Rod to maybe discard some of these water with Greninja and such, then that's going to add to the headache of trying to weave in your most powerful attackers on this turn. This is not the ideal situation. One, you know, one energy in hand to, you know, attach, fine. Second energy in hand to use a Vrading Greninja, all right, why not? Yeah. But that's it. You need energy in your deck to accelerate with Mirage Gate. You don't want lows in your prizes. You don't want any more than two in your hand. This is, all well, the energy's in the wrong place, but we yes. do have two Comfey down here, so you can at least start drawing some cards with the flower selecting, start getting towards that combo, which is looking increasingly unlikely. <laughs> yeah, we need this Pokestop to find a switch card. That's the, that's the start of this. Otherwise, we're not gonna have any flower selecting this turn. Failing any switching card, we could find any Nest Ball, 
and try and get ready for Ninja in the mix as well for extra draw, but there really aren't that many outs here from the poker stop, Ross. Let's see the big three cards for Andrew. This will define how strong his turn nope. is going to be. Yep. Nesmo yes. switch card is a good start. That means we can get Radiant Greninja in the mix to draw a couple additional cards and start using flower selecting here to begin fueling this loss zone. That's still going to be the mission for Andrew, no doubt. You know, a second ago, you mentioned there's only two energy in the deck. Yeah. Hit one off the poker <laughs> We're stop. Down to one. There's now one energy in deck. Do you think you're going to see it off a flower selecting, Joe? Oh, let's not. Let's not go there, Ross. <laughs> I just think we are. We, there's one lightning energy in the deck. And I'm just calling it now. I think we're going to see it off a of flower selecting in a minute. You can't or, curse him like that. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, it in. I'm not trying to curse anyone, Joe. I'm just saying that the way this game has started, that is probably what's going to happen. Yeah. Outside chance of drawing it off concealed cards, though. Yes, that would be still quite bad. Yeah, <laughs> it would not be ideal. We're going to throw away a psychic energy with concealed cards here before flower selecting. Hoping to find those chorus, of course. We pick up boss's orders and buddy buddy poffin. Still not ideal, so it looks like it's going to be a big flower selecting here from Andrew. Is it Super Rod switch and cart. Switch Carts? Yeah, so we can switch instantly cart. Switch Carts if we want to. Andrew playing for... Oh, it's oh, Pal Pad. Pad and Switch Cart. Yeah, so we're going to get rid of the Pal Pad in this situation. That's good for Brandon to, to oh, see that. Oh, Super Rod, sorry. Yeah, Super Rod being kept for sure. Um, as we know, there's so few energy in the deck that these Super Rods are super valuable. Here's the second flower selecting. Do we see Chorus? No. We do not. Roxanne and Rescue Board. So Andrew is not going to have the explosive turn that we have been touting from this list. So often, we've seen insane ramps from him as well as Andrew Gantner playing a very similar aggressive 60, but Andrew just going to pass things over. Not a Cramorant swing either. This is a huge break for Isaiah. Yeah, that is a win. We've got two cards in the loss zone, but not much else. Isaiah's actually managing to get another turn to just start setting up here. This is a big win. Try and get a couple of Curly in now. Draw some cards with refinement. Start setting up this board. The first couple turns with Gardevoir are always a problem because you're not putting any pressure on. But if you get past those first couple of turns, that is when your deck really starts to go up in power and you can start really coming back against your opponent. You do have Unfair Stamp in hand. You want to save that when your opponent takes a prize. But it's just interesting that it's already there, ready to go. Bradner already has Artisan, and I believe there's the option of Arvin as well. I'd love to see Buddy Buddy Poffin for more Rolts and Manaphy this turn. Just establish those on the bench to safeguard yourself around Radiant Greninja. Isaiah's not to know that Andrew has prized two water energy, of course. Uh, but also the Midnight Fluttering is in the considerations now for Isaiah. You can retreat this Monkey Dory, still get your Technical Machine Evolution off this turn, whilst also shutting down more Flower Selecting from Andrew. This is a really heads-up play from Isaiah, trying to protect your Curlier even more this turn. Yeah, I like this, making sure that your opponent, if they're going to take out the Curlier, they have at least got to jump through the maximum number of hoops if they're going to actually go ahead and do it. So we've got one Curlier down. We're trying to search for the second one. We've got the wrong energy on Monkey Dory for now, <laughs> but it's probably a moot point until we start seeing some damage down on there. Yeah. There is only one Monkey Dory in the deck, unlike what we saw from Henry's build yes so there is an argument to try and protect that one get it out the active by the end of the term so it's available to use later drift loon and a routes i think that was yeah i think we still end up still buddy buddy poffening from this arvon because the mana fee is still so important here and i think there's already tm evolution in hand so you can just bank a bravery charm quite happily i really like retreating this monkey dory as well because this is still a great way that you can offset lots of damage throughout the game yes especially when there's such low hit point basic pokemon as i can sometimes even cheat extra prize cards via purely the monkey dory itself here so you're going to end up attaching to this flutter main and just using tm evolution and getting even more curlier onto this board it's been a really good opener for isaiah who would have been a little bit worried about andrew but after the slow turn it's given isaiah the uh, the time to build up multiple Curlier now, and it looks like a really great situation for him. I like where Azaya is right now. You've got three Curlier down, and you just turned off Comfey because Flutter in the active. So now it's going to be so much harder for Andrew to get up to seven cards in the Lost Zone without... You need to use at least a minimum one Flower Selecting. Just using your, you know, one Lost Vacuum and Chorus's experiment won't get there. Yeah, critically, there is still the option of Iron Bundle for Andrew, and that could be found with Artisan. So you can move this Flutter Main fairly easily. It does just sort of spend your use of Stadium. 
rather than having to grab Cramorant for free or anything of the sort. But that shouldn't be too much of an issue for yeah. Andrew. Already we're seeing that Hyper Blower coming onto the board. So we will unlock these flower selecting and give Isaiah another headache here of what to promote. Yeah, because you kind of, if you're going to lose something this turn, you want to lose Flutter, mate. Yes. Curlia are your draw engine and the evolve into Gardevoir. Monkey Dory does the monkey maths, which we've talked about <laughs> is pretty important. <laughs> and Manaphy protects you from Greninja. You'd kind of need all those Pokemon. You yeah. don't really need Fluttermane. No, that's just there to be the sacrificial Pokemon, but Andrew's going to try and push that aside. We're still working towards Chorus, let's not forget. So we still need a lot from this flower selecting, but first is the decision for Isaiah. He's going to check the prize cards that he's already taken note of before making any other decision. Is going to go Monkey Dory here. Have to go Monkey Dory. Yeah, I it's don't the like best it. of a bad bunch. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It is the best bad decision Ooh, you can Oh, there's Chorus make. Ross. Oh, And as expected, big. the Lightning Energy does end up in the Lost Zone. <laughs> Called it. Yeah, you did call that. <laughs> Here we go, though. Andrick, uh, sorry, Andrew Hedrick is going to go up to five from this Chorus and is holding on to Lost Vacuum as well. So it's not out of the realms of possibility to get to seven here. No. Ooh, nice extra switching cards available. I believe there was another Mirage Gate there. There's Nest Ball. If you need to find Iron Hands here, you could take a two prize KO on this Monkey Dory. You can afford to get rid of the Artisan as long as you, with your Lost Vacuum, but it's yes. your opponent's stadium, so you need a second flower selecting Correct. if you do that, or you can play your own stadium at all, and that will get you to seven with the Lost Vacuum. Either way, I mean, at this stage, thank goodness you've still got that Manaphy down because Greninja is threatening here, but we need to look at the, uh, the energy for Andrew. With the amount prized, with the one in the lost zone, with a bunch in the hand, yeah. there's no energy in deck right now, unless we've seen a super rod, which I don't... We, ha we have done one okay. super rod so far, so there are some in there, and there's another one in the hand as well for Andrew. Might want to use a switch first and get one more flower selecting to just scout all the options here, and that's what we are going to see. Yeah. If you want to take it a little slower, you could still try and get Cramorant in the mix, although we did just lost zone a nest ball. And we have used the Artisan already. Yep. for the Iron Bundle. So this is still an important decision for Andrew, who is going to Flower Select here, eventually. There is Flower Selecting, get two cards. Oh, there is Another a Nest Ball, ball there. It's also hitting the Lost Zone by the looks of things. Oh, no, nope. it's kept this time over the Poke Gear. So now you do have access to whatever basic Pokemon in your deck you like. Do we have Mirage Gate in hand? I think there's at least yeah. one in hand. We have Mirage Gate, but I think this Nest Ball will be telling of how many energy we can recycle all in the turn. Let's have a look. What is going to be Andrew's best play here? Iron Hands being spied. Obviously, you want to be taking multi-prize knockouts as quickly as possible here. It does look like that is what Andrew is eyeing up there. Get the Iron Hands. You will need two Mirage Gate if you want to get the Iron Hands rolling. Well, unless you want to arm press, but I don't see why you would arm press the Monkey Dory. That seems like a <laughs> less than fully efficient use of your resources. So down comes the Iron Hands here. If you get two Mirage Gate, then you can have all the energy you need. And from there, here comes the Lost Vacuum, yes. by the way, of course, because now you will be at seven in the Lost Zone. You don't need to get rid of your own tool or stadium because you managed to use that second Comfey Flower Select in this turn. So now we see the Super Rod, the energy in your deck is more important because that is from where you can Mirage Gate. And this is where Andrew wants to be. Here comes, there are two Mirage Gate in hand. I think we're going to see them both here, Joe. Yep, absolutely. There's even switching cards if you want to reserve one and put an energy on a different attacker as well alongside this Iron Hands because we still have the turn attachment as well. As we finally hit that crucial seven card loss zone, as you're seeing in the background there, these Mirage Gates have been unlocked. One of the most ridiculous item cards printed for energy acceleration we've ever seen. And it has come to the forefront of this Lost Zone box archetype. It's allowed us to play these few counts of wacky attackers, basically playing the best of the bunch that we have available. And Iron Hand certainly is that, thanks to the Ampy Very Much attack that is coming into the active now. And Andrew is going to be kicking off this prize race in game number one. Yeah, take out the Monkey Dory, take two prizes, and get rid of a valuable piece from Isaiah's board there. Yeah. Worth noting, the second the, the second Mirage Gate was just for a single energy. Ah, right. And then there was an attachment for the turn. Yes. Didn't need any more energy. So just got the four on Iron Hands. And basically saying to Isaiah, look, you better have an answer. If you don't have an answer, 
I'm just going to keep doing this turn after turn after turn. Well, you want an answer, Ross. There's the unfair stamp already in hand for Isaiah before even using any refinement. Yeah, he's had it there since the beginning of the yeah. game. It's been in his hand for several turns. So now can wow. you piece together an attacker? Here comes the unfair stamp. Question is, it's, it's not going to do too much unless you can actually pair it with something that can do some decent damage into the Iron Hands. Because it's not one of those attacks that says you can't use it next turn. No, you <laughs> totally can use it next turn. Can and probably will if it's not going to be dealt with. But Isaiah is drawing a lot of cards here. Initially, you get five for yourself. Andrew just going down to two cards. Uh, we are looking for a few pieces, though, for Isaiah. I believe we still need to find quite a few Psychic Energy, as well as our Gardevoir EX, and, of course, an attacking threat to actually deal with this Iron Hands. Yeah, that's that's quite a lot, frankly, Joe. It's not the easiest route out there. Andrew goes down to two cards in hand, and, of course, your engine is a lot of early game comp phase, but they tend to run out as you're running out of cards that switch you don't tend to get too many come phases it's not like refinement or be morale where you can be using it just recklessly every turn there does come a point where you kind of stop using comfy very much as i is already thinking about resources he's going to super rod back good old monkey dory <laughs> nice so that that's an option perhaps with counter catcher in hand as i thinking is it possible to bring up the Iron Thorns? Typically, this wouldn't be a play possible for a Gardevoir player, but because isaiah has got the Flutter main currently in the active position, you still could try and make that play. Iron Thorns has a very chunky retreat cost. You're putting your opponent down to a low amount of cards, so if you can't deal with the Iron Hands immediately, you still have that fallback option. But before that, Ross, we still have three refinements here. Already throwing away a Psychic Energy. That's a great start. I think I've seen Ultra Ball there as well. It's really just going to be deciphering what are the best and least valuable cards in this hand so that we can refine them correctly and get towards a big combo. There's still Supporter to play as well because so far all we've used is the Unfair Stamp. Oh, gets those two cards off refinement and draws an energy, which is a great target for the third refinement. You want energy in the discard to accelerate with Guard of War EX, so drawing them is good. This is the third and final refinement, another energy, and they nest ball here. So we've got some pieces. What can we put together with it? Here comes the Arvum. Let's you search for an item card and a tool card. It's so going to be it good old Drifloon plus Bravery Charm, perhaps. We have the Nest Ball already in hand. That's a great way. We could Balloon Blast through the Iron Hands EX. I like that. That seems like a fun thing to do. Yeah. Getting the Earthen Vessel to get more energy as well. Yeah, making all the use out of every card in this hand. Looking very intelligent for Isaiah. And also discarding an energy, which, like we said, very big part of these couple of turns to make sure you can get as much energy in the discard pile as you need to. Yeah, there's Drifloon. Ooh, Monkey Dory is the other option Isaiah is going to look for here instead. Does that mean we're going to be attacking with Gardevoir Rex this turn? And just attacking into this Iron Hands whilst also prepping an Adrenobrain? Isaiah looking to just avoid a gust effect for a turn and then maybe clear up that Guard of REX later down the line. You don't have to deal with this Pokemon all in one go. And yeah, with the turn attachment to Monkey Dory, we're going to be swinging with Guard of REX this turn, Ross, and yeah. just prepping this Iron Hands. You're not quite going to get there. You're going to be 10 damage short, but you can always finish it off with a second Adrenobrain next turn. And crucially, they will leave a Pokemon in the active, which does not get KO'd by Ampu very much. Although, right now, everything on the bench will. So if there's any way we could get Iron Bundle back for Andrew, True. that could be a big card next turn. For now, we're going to see three of those damage going off of Gardevoir yeah. on two Iron Hands with the Adrenobrain. Then 190 damage. It is still not KO'd. Used to be 120 was enough for these big basics. But there's a bunch with 130 now, and that does include Iron Hands. But not getting a second. Second big Pokemon oh, prime on the catcher. bench. Oh my word, you don't even need Iron Bundle. What a crazy three cards. Chorus Prime Catcher Mirage Gate from oh. Andrew. He is not out of this game yet. That is a ridiculous trio of cards to draw. That is maximizing your value from this Iron Hands, which is so important here. You'll go down to just two prize cards remaining. What a big three cards for Andrew Hedrick here. The best time to do it in your win and in. Wow. Big chorus decision here still as well. Going to be getting rid of Cramorant and the poker stop here. 
I believe there was switch carts in there as well. Maybe using this switch cart to undo some of the damage from Adrenobrain last turn. Yeah, this is huge as well. This foils Isaiah's plan. Yeah, it does. Yeah, that extra 30 heal, so massive here as we get to go into Confe as well. Yeah, it undoes the Adrenobrain from last turn. And like we said, that put you on 10 remaining. Now you're on 40. Adrenobrain only moves 30. That is a very big deal. And as I did everything right last turn, yeah. leave a Pokemon in the active that doesn't get KO'd by Ampu very much. Leave the Iron Hand such that you can KO it with Adrenobrain the following turn. Yeah. It was a great turn, and you even put your opponent down to a two-card hand with unfair <laughs> stamp. You just unfortunately managed to give them the best three-card hand imaginable, and here comes a prime catcher. And if you're if you're as I are right now, you're just like, hang on a second, come on. <sighs> I I unfair stamped you. I used my A spec. Yeah. This is a thanks I get. Well, and now Andrew A spec straight back. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah, A spec. <laughs> Foils ace back, yeah. and this is going to be two more prizes. Andrew's going to go up four prizes to zero. He's also able to nestle here. Might want to start thinking about trying to get Sableye in the mix here, if that's possible. We are going to try and get something established. Yeah, Sableye might be the option here from this nest ball. Yeah, a great Pokemon to just put on the board, knowing that Lost Mine can be so valuable with still so many lower hit point Pokemon around this board for Isaiah who cannot be happy about how that stamp played out last turn. That is not what you're expecting from Unfair Stamp. No. Like, how many times have you had an opponent play an Ino, put you to six hands, and you've drawn nothing right. and lost the game? <laughs> so when you put your opponent down to a two-card hand, you're like, this has got to stick. And then they get the supporter card, they get the ace wow. back. There is the KO with Ampu very much. Andrew goes down to just two prizes remaining. And Isaiah is really up against the wall here with 28 minutes left and needing a win. A tie does not do... There is no way Isaiah is getting in at 34 points. Right. A tie is not going to get you there. You need the win here. You've got to start thinking about the clock. Big refinement. We only have two cards here to find Iono. No, we don't have the hand disruption we're looking for here. Andrew's going to be able to keep a really nice hand. This is dangerous now. Looks like Andrew is in a commanding position. Taking out some of Isaiah's draw means that there will be no hand disruption here. The best we can do is knocking out this Iron Hands, I would imagine, unless we're getting really crafty with more counter catcher plays and you're trying to set up another like multi-prize turn KO, the Iron Thorns was started by Andrew Hedrick and has such a high retreat cost, so that might be coming into Isaiah's thinking because he has to really get cheeky here if he wants to deal with this Iron Hands. You're not going to win a traditional back and forth prize race at this stage. It's, it's just not happening. So you're five damage counters away if you're looking at the Iron Hands, so it's going to take two Adrenobrain to actually get the KO there. What if we what if we flutter main? Counters. What if we push the Iron Hands to the bench and get Thorns in the active? Then we could go Adrenobrain, a Brain plus Hex Hurl to finish off this Iron Hands. That would KO the catcher. Iron Hands. That would get it on the bench and get some decent yeah. prep damage. I feel like this is the play. I think it is absolutely the play here. You get two prizes while also trapping something in the active, yeah. which is frankly not great. It's a big hex hurl. You are concerned about Sableye somewhat, but you are getting a bit of heal in thanks to your Adrenobrain. Yeah. And we might want to continue to prep some energy. Yeah, I really like this choice because you are probably trapping this Iron Thorns EX, I would imagine. You can also take out the Sableye as well, though, and take that threat off the board in addition to the rest of this Iron Hands. I, I think just chain take Sableye. Pride. Oh, I think Sableye, though. I see Sableye where you're is so scary. <laughs> Sableye is so scary, but the problem is there's just other options over the board here. And I don't know, I like the idea of trying to buy a turn. You're absolutely right. Taking out that Sableye, taking two prizes, taking both the good attacking threats off the board could be fun. You've still got Manaphy down to thwart real Greninja shenanigans. Yeah. And of course, a couple of Mirage Gate are down at this stage. But I believe it's only the two. There should still be two available. I think so, yeah. So there are other options that can come down here. Blood Moon Ursa Luna still an option, yeah. especially if two prizes get taken. Yeah. As I was just going to use this Arvin this turn to grab an Ultra Ball, prepping for another turn because we know there's already Counter Catcher available. I feel like Sableye has to go here. 
Yeah, that is going to yeah, be wise. You are correct picks. there, Joe. This is a really good bit of maths. The Hex Hurl has been such an important card that we've seen from these Gardevoir players using over and over again with the Monkey Dory. The two damage counters really are huge here. Yeah, we're going to get the KO with the uh, Fluttermane. And we get one free counter to throw onto Iron Thorns EX as well here. Yeah, after the Adrenaline Brain, there was only one damage counter needed to take out the Iron Hands. So you take three prizes, you're still behind. Counter Catcher is still live. There is a second copy in your deck. Yep. And now it's basically going to Andrew. What have you got, mate? Have you got something with which to respond? If he does, then this game could still be finishing pretty quickly. But if Andrew doesn't respond quickly here, Isaiah could actually start running away with this again. Well, Andrew did hold on to that Roxanne from a previous turn. There's also the switch. Man, is Andrew thinking of switch guarding this one damage counter off Iron Thorns? That one damage counter is a big deal because it allows Gardevoir EX plus Monkey Dory to finish off Iron Thorns in one attack. Is Andrew thinking this far ahead to spend switch cart before using Roxanne here? Such high level play from both of these players already. Once again, it's a 230, not a 220. 220 yeah. used to be the number. Gardevoir EX plus one Adrenaline Brain, 190 plus 30 is 220. The things that are still under that, your traditional Pokemon V, etc., yeah. will be gotten. But these new big EXs, your Roaring Moon, your Iron Forms, your Iron Hands, they don't have 220, they have 230. So, yes, that is a very, very big damage counter. Let's have a think. Is possibly the other good option would be attacking with Volt Cyclone this turn and KOing the Fluttermane, and then you're denying the use of Psychic Embrace from Isaiah, essentially trapping this Gardevoir EX as the only attacking threat on the board. The initialization ability is an important one. It's turning out to be once this Fluttermane is dealt with. Yeah, it really is. We do see the shuffle there from Isaiah of Andrew's deck, having a little bit of a think. What is actually going to be my option when it comes back <laughs> to me next turn? I don't think my opponent's winning this turn. So what can I do to try and make sure there is another turn coming up? It's, it's not an easy situation because there's just so many options for Andrew here. Going to attach before using the Roxanne here, I think. Don't mind that. Yeah, I feel like we just don't have the energy right now. We're lacking Super Odd. I think that's the big thing to keep in mind here. Andrew really is debating over the switch card. I feel like the damage is so important that it is worthwhile here. But it is removing yet another switch out from your deck. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know. <laughs> it's a close one. This is a marginal call, but we are going to heal the 10 off the I Iron do, Thorns I do here. like healing the 10. I think it's yeah. relevant. And then it's a big rock sound. We're looking for drawing back into this Mirage Gate, but importantly, finding a Super Rod alongside it. And of course, we need to also pivot the Confe that we've just put into the active position here. So still a lot to come from these six cards. What you're looking for, it's going to be an awkward situation if you don't get it, because if you pass over to Isaiah without taking any more prizes, you're going to end up absolute minimum. You're going to be tied on prizes here. That is not where you really want to be. You were the aggressor. You took the early prizes. You want to keep running away with the game. Good news is you put your opponent down to a very low hand, and they've only got one refinement on the board. Yeah. No Greninja, so there's not that many cards being drawn. It's Correct. not like some times you do this to your Gardevoir deck. So there is a chance this sticks. What do we see? Oh, wow. Switch, we, we found the Super lot, Odd, Mirage Gate. Those are the free cards you said, Joe. And I think you were right, incidentally. <laughs> That's phenomenal, the Super Odd being the most critical of the bunch because most of our energy are in the discard pile. The Iron Hands does take quite a few. And Andrew has been forced to use concealed cards for draw throughout the majority of the game <laughs> with this frustrating Fluttermane making life more awkward. So this is a great sequence for Andrew. I don't think we have any ball search, but we're just going to get the Sableye back in as an option and then immediately get this Volt Cyclone powered up with Iron Hands EX to finish off this Fluttermane. And you're really limiting the options for Isaiah now. That 10 damage heal plus the initialization ability is huge here, denying that Psychic Embrace in the process. Yep, Volt Cyclone does 140, plus you get to move an energy from this Pokemon to one of your bench Pokemon. Not that relevant, you're just doing 140. Is it great? No, these Pokemon that are designed to block don't have great attacks, but it's good <laughs> enough to take out a Fluttermane here and put Andrew down to just a single prize card remaining. 
really in the driver's seat at this stage, making Isaiah Ooh. really question, what do I do next turn? Is, How can I get back? There is a question for Andrew. You could bench the Blood Moon Ursa Luna EX and move this energy over to it. Oh, I like that. But he's that. holding on to it instead. It could fall prey to random Iono counter catcher shenanigans. So yeah. you can see why he's not gone for it. Instead, just going to bank an energy onto a Comfey. Let's see the two cards Isaiah's been dealt from the Roxanne here. He's going to go into Gardevoir EX. That's your chunkiest Pokemon. So that's at least a start. And we know we do have additional draw here from Refinement. The game is coming down to this turn. And we have a big two cards by the looks of things for Isaiah here. Yeah, Andrew just going to have a quick look through the discard. Of course, late in the game in game one, it's always nice to have a quick check, give you information for game two. Just make sure you know exactly what your opponent's Ooh. deck is playing. Isaiah has Iono at the very least. We are going to see the Hisuian Heavy Ball just burnt here out of the hand before we're going to shuffle. As I was going to see three more cards, you have to put Andrew down to one. Oh, absolutely. That's always going to be your play. You can just punch into this Iron Thorns alongside this Hand Disruption, use Monkey Dorian, still make that setup play happen. You can still win over two turns. Absolutely. You just have to dodge here. The lap stadium denies an attacking threat for Andrew. Oh, I like this, because that means something like a Blood Moon Ursa yeah. Luna, which is a good attacker. There's no bench space for it anymore. So that's quite nice. Put your opponent down to one. And this puts Andrew on a one-turn clock. Yeah. Brain plus Gardevoir. Yeah, fine. It, it leaves Iron Thorns with one damage counter remaining. But you know what? Next turn, you move over with the one more of Adrenobrain and then get a KO on one of those weak Pokemon on the bench. Isaiah's got game on board next turn, or does he? We need to see a Psychic Energy, Ross. We can't use Psychic Embrace just yet because oh, I... of the Iron Thorns. We need to attach an energy here, so this Curlia still needs to find a Psychic Energy. I just kind of assumed we had one at this point, Joe. No, just the three cards from Iron. Let's see, is there Psychic Energy here for no! Isaiah? No, there's Ultra Ball. You can Ultra Ball the entire hand away and have one more refinement. And then you're still looking for Psych Energy. This uh, initialization from Iron Thorns EX is massive right now. Yeah, it stops any Pokemon with a rule box in play, yours and your opponents, other than future Pokemon, using their abilities. Would even turn off your um, your own Blood Moon, but then of course it comes in the active and it doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> but it does Just gonna matter pass on instead. the Gardevoir. Oh no, he didn't find it. And Andrew hits Chorus. Can we Iron Bundle? What else can we piece together here? There's the Lost Vacuum. Can we find a way to game here? There's Sableye. Can we Lost Mine? A close lost here. Mine. We're, We're having a count at cards remaining in the deck. Energy becomes a bit of an issue we here. We have you... Poker Stop, Ross. Are we just looking for switching cards here? If we find switching cards, we can do a bunch of flower selecting. Opening up the board. Let's see the three cards. Mirage Gate and, and switch. switch. That's going to be it. We can recover the Psych Energy with Super Rod. Get the Sableye back into play. Switch into it. Andrew's just going to make sure here. But I think Andrew will be able to take the final prize with Lost Mine. There's a Super Rod. That's going to get the Psychic, Psychic energy. energy into the deck. Then you can use your Mirage Gate to put the energy onto Sableye. What other energy are you going to use? My goodness. Who cares? It goes onto the Sableye. We've got the Switch, and then we can you can't lost do that, mine. But he has Switch in hand anyway. Yeah, you can't Mirage Gate to Psychic Energy, but no. it doesn't matter. It doesn't change anything here at all, so don't worry about that. <laughs> it's going to be the one prize KO on the Curlia. Andrew, wow. What a game. He was not able, not phased by the unfair stamp. And then in the end, not phased by the Iono to one. Drew Chorus, it's that easy. <laughs> oh, it's always it's always easy when you draw your favorite Man. supporter off of an Iono to one. That was a really good end game scenario. And it seems like Isaiah has actually conceded entirely here. So we are finishing off our match there. We are not going to be going to a game two. Isaiah is saying, look, I know a tie isn't good enough for me here. Yeah. You take the win. You go into.